thank you please go ahead we are running a little short of time so if there is time permits we will have some discussion go ahead please okay can you hear me yes yes we can see your slides okay also. so um, uh, thank you for, to sumit and the other organizers and good to see akshay who was my roommate <laughs> I'm going to talk about what I did differently in the past year in terms of ophthalmic imaging, which is my special interest. Uh, and I'm going to present some of the cases um, to explain what, uh, to, to demonstrate what we did differently. I have no fear financial interest because I'm going to talk about loads of equipment. Um, as I said, this is a case-based uh, discussion. Uh, I'm going to sh show you how we used these modalities uh, in a different uh, manner to help our patients. So case one is a six-year-old female referred to me by the optometrist uh, because they couldn't improve their vision with glasses. The vision was reduced at 0.6 logmar in the right and 0.46 in the left eye. Uh, this is the multicolor. This, uh, this is what you get on a Heidelberg uh, when you image them. And you can see that there are some amount of um, disturbances over there. Six-year-old girl, not, not sure what, what's happening. So we get a fundus autofluorescence done and you can re see that very clearly those hyper autofluorescence specs these are very classic of Stargardt's disease so we get a genetic testing done and the child does have Stargardt disease so it's a quick turnaround for the child there's the diagnosis uh, and then we can put in support in place to as they need extra support in school uh, next case patient is a 12 year old female referred to me again with the reduced central vision and uh, some macular changes uh, if you clearly see on these uh, fundus imaging you can see those macular changes there and some some rp i mean pigmentary changes over there uh, so we get a fundus autofluorescence and you can see the kind of um, difference you see the um, enormity of this lesion actually which was not seen on fundus imaging but on autofluorescence you can see those classical hyperautofluorescent dots and hypoautofluorescent inside. And this is classic of a Best's disease. Uh, so we do a genetic testing. Uh, and the key is that in Best disease, the fundus autofluorescence is always more prominent than the uh, fundoscopic examination. So if you have very early Best, if you do a fundus autofluorescence, you can get a better uh, view of their lesion. Case 3 is a 16-year-old girl uh, referred with problem with night vision. Um, this is the fundus picture, as anybody could, uh, you know, guess. This is typical of uh, retinitis pigmentosa, bony spicules there, waxipalar, attenuated blood vessels. Uh, so this looks like an early retinitis pigmentosa on this picture, but, but some, some difference over there. But this is the fundus autofluorescence. So this is actually is a very advanced retinitis pigmentosa. You can see the amount of um, changes of what it's seen on a, a, on a fundus autofluorescence, what you couldn't see cl classically on the normal fundus examination. And what I want to explain is about this hyper autofluorescent ring. Uh, this is a ring that is present between the viable retina, which is within this ring. And this is all non-viable retina. All these are all already gone. So this child has got an extremely constricted field. Uh, just based on fundus autofluorescence, you can know that. And this is only viable retina that is um, functioning. So this, this genetic testing did confirm the retinitis pigmentosa. So I have superimposed the Heidelberg OCD on the fundus autofluorescence. And you can see that this is the ring. This is the edge of the ring. And this is the viable retina there. And you can see the photoreceptor all damaged over there outside the ring. So this is the only viable retina, which uh, again is confirmed on electrodiagnostic testing. You can see that this retina is fine. All, all of this is um, uh, non-viable. The uh, hyperautofluorescent ring can be at the junction of viable and non-viable retina, but the viable retina can be outside the ring, as in this case, where this is a macular dystrophy, probably a North Carolina. You can see that there is um, a nice ring there, but the viable retina is outside the ring. Uh, whereas in retinitis pigmentosa, the viable retina will be inside the ring. Of course, Blender's autofluorescence is helpful in cases of drusen. Uh, some buried drusen, you can see it very clearly. Uh, this is superficial drusen again, which, which it shows. Uh, the next patient is a 13 year old female, uh, male referred by optician as he was seeing dark patches in his central vision in the right eye. His vision was slightly down, but on examination, I could see only a subtle change. This is the optomap. Op autofluorescence you can see that 
maybe something going on there not very clear this is the oct you can see the isos junction being disrupted slightly there uh, and if i um, zoom in on the fundus over there on the macula you can see some amount of lesion there but very subtle changes uh, that was seen we got a heidelberg uh, autofluorescence uh, because the optomap and the heidelberg use different uh, wavelengths uh, the optomap is green ref uh, reflectance and the heidelberg is blue reflectance so they do show different uh, uh, lesions differently but i couldn't see much of a changes so what we did was we got a uh, infrared imaging of, on heidelberg and you can now see the, that lesion uh, characteristic lesion what is seen in a handheld laser induced trauma uh, accidental damage due to handheld uh, laser and the child parents did uh, gift him one and these commercial ones on ebay and amazon are uh, probably sometimes even 100 watt which is a medical grade but these pointers are all illegal so you can see that characteristic lesion with one lesion there and a line there this is probably due to the pain where the child has moved his eye and you can see that line uh, this this vertical line originate from the RPE and they go into the photoreceptor. So you get this classical lesion. Uh, you may not see that this is as this is an old lesion. It will show up only on an infrared uh, reflectance rather than on uh, your uh, regular uh, fundus autofluorescence. Uh, this was also shown in a paper here. You can see that blue reflectance, what is seen in an Heidelberg, mm -hmm. green reflectance mm -hmm. seen in an optomap, doesn't show this lesion which is seen on the multicolor of the Heidelberg. And if you look at the infrared reflectance, it clearly delineates the lesion. We, these are old lesions which can be seen better on infrared. When it's early lesions, probably you can see it on green or blue reflectance. So this is another utility of infrared or near or red reflectance. Uh, case five is a seven-year-old with uh, NF1. Um, we, as we all know that these individuals can get Irish nodules, that's yeast nodule, but they can also get choroidal nodules. So these choroidal nodules are not very easy to see. Sometimes they don't have a leash nodule, but if you do an infrared or near infrared red light imaging, you can see these choroidal nodules so clearly. So this child didn't have a leash nodule, but they showed up very nice choroidal nodules on uh, uh, infrared and they are highly, they, they may be more prone for developing optic pathway glioma. So they would need to be imaged from, from the MRI point of view. Uh, case six is a 12 year old female, light sensitivity and nystagmus from birth. Uh, visual acuity was reduced to one log mark, that's 660 vision. Uh, this is the multicolor with the uh, fundus autofluorescence. You can see those uh, lesions there. Uh, and when you do an OCT, this is a classical foveal cavitation. Uh, foveal cavitation can be classically seen in achromatopsia. So we did a gene testing and that proved achromatopsia for this. But they can also be seen in other conditions mentioned here. You can sometimes seen in, uh, see them in cone dystrophy with supernormal rod ERG or vitelliform macular dystrophy stagards and sometimes even in uh, solar retinopathy etc but that foveal cavitation uh, some, is most characteristic of chrom achromatopsia so that was what and when they have got light sensitivity uh, it's more of a cone dysfunction k7 is a five-year-old female with nf1 which is low risk the patient was supposed to be low risk they were not yet had the mri the parents have been always you know really anxious we have been monitoring them in the clinic. We have not found any leash nodules. And uh, this is the first time that they got a OCT scan. And we have started doing something called a macular volume scan on TopCon. Uh, this is just a software modulation. And you will get uh, the inner retinal uh, layer thickness. That is the ganglion cell layer, nerve fiber layer. And it will be uh, you know, demonstrated as a red lesion like that. So this patient had a normal macula, but on a volume scan, I, even the disc was OK. Uh, this is a Caucasian child. Uh, you can see those volumes can showing these lesions, and we got a, a MRI scan because they have these lesions on the OCT, and they were found to have an optic pathway glioma. My last case is a six-month-old male uh, presented to us with nystagmus, uh, some light sensitivity, but anti-segment was normal, no iris trans elimination, no other problems. So we did a handled OCT, which we use a lot, um, and the handled OCT showed a foveal hypoplasia. So there was no other signs of albinism so they got we were suspecting an slc388 mutation uh, which causes uh, cross asymmetry on vep no albinism and they get foveal hypoplasia with congenital nystagma so this child had that condition uh, and that was uh, easy we didn't waste time on doing other things otherwise they may be investigated for congenital nystagmus 
handled OCT at six months of age, genetic testing in another six months into at one year of age, we had a diagnosis for this child. This is what I've been doing differently in the past year. Uh, I want to acknowledge my genetic colleague Panos for some of the cases that we have co-managed and some of the nice images and uh, Vinod who's my other colleague uh, for some of the cases that we have co-managed. Thank you very much.